Good morning, my friends. Welcome, welcome back to the channel. This is Tanya at Side Gig Crafts. You guys, today is a day that we are starting to get ready for Valentine's Day. Yes, I'm behind. I'm behind the ball. <laughs> I'm behind the ball. But I like to start out with getting out my die cuts for the season. And I thought I'd bring you along with this. We're going to set them in a basket over to the side of different ones that we have so we can get some ideas. This one is a heart box and I love making this one. This one is from KS Crafts. Makes a beautiful box. We're going to set that out there. Got some XOXOs also from KS Craft. Get me some ideas here. Mailboxes. I love mailboxes for Valentine's Day. Did you guys remember making the mailboxes when you were a kid in your um, elementary school? Did you do that for Valentine's Day? That was my favorite craft of the year. Got the little heart box with the chocolates in it. This was also KS Craft. I've got, let's see, I've got a big style. Oh, I could use, I haven't used this one. I haven't used this one, but this could be a lot of fun. I'm pulling it, pulling it. I love this one. This is a very detailed one from Six. Love these hearts. They remind me of um, like sugar cookies or something. I love those. Okay. This one's fun. This has got little charms on it. Actually, this is a couple different ones because that I don't think is in the same set. So this is a couple different sets put together for storage purposes. We got Cupid and a heart, alterations, movers, and shapers. So that's kind of cool. I've never used that one. I've got a whole nesting die set, perfect for Valentine's Day, of course. We've got these hearts that are nesting. Also, oh my goodness, way too many I haven't used yet. This one I got. Somebody made the um, some of these for me, and I absolutely love them, and so I went and found the die. They turn out gorgeous. I haven't used it yet because I already had some, but I'm going to make this one too. I'm going to share those. Let's see. This is Heart Cup Valentine's. I don't know what this one is. I think Michelle might have given me this one last year. I don't remember. We're going to play with that. We've got this one. This is great for wedding cards. It's got the lacy trim for the, the bride. And then it's got this piece in the middle that's got a little bow tie on it for the groom. So cute. Let's see what else we've got. We've got a bunch of loose things in here. I don't know why. We're going to have these all. Ooh, I've got my Memdex. My Memdex one. This is a shaker piece. This might be the whole set, actually. We're going to have to put these in some storage. I'm going to have to put these in some storage. This one says... I don't know what this one says. With love. I see it now. With love. So that's pretty cute. I'm going to make some of those. Got a little typewriter with little Valentine hearts in there. That needs to be in a bigger container so it doesn't get lost. Lots of pieces down here. So what I've been doing since I've been organizing my, my space a little bit better, or trying to, is as I go through these and find loose ones, I put them into the envelopes like these. And most of them will have um, magnetic sheets behind them. But I think I ran out at one point, so that's why I don't have them in all of them. Love you. That's a shaker. I love this one. Or it can be made into a shaker. Love you. Be mine. That's one of my favorites as well. Got this loose heart. So when I lose, when I sometimes when they get loose like that, I don't know where they came from, so I'll just put them all together. And that doesn't bother me. And then I've got this Sizzix one. Love. That's cutie. I've got this one with the cocoa and the heart spoons. Those are my great shakers. And that's it for my Valentine's. Now, of course, you can use other things for Valentine's, too. You know, you, maybe you're going on a trip. You could put hearts and things on there. You know, a romantic getaway. You could do something with that. You could turn all kinds of things into Valentine's. There's a heart on this one. Those are bunnies. Oh, you could make a bunny holding a heart. How cute would that be? I might do that. I might do that. So I've got spring in here right before my, or Easter before my um, Valentine's. You can do ladybugs for Valentine's. I've got lots of, I've got lots of bunnies in my, my spring. Okay, and then what's this one? This is, those are bows. What is this one? Heart shape something. This might have been, Michelle gave me a couple of them um, last year. And I didn't get a chance to use them yet. Maybe I do have to cut, tear this open. Do I have to tear it open? I'm not going 
to. So that might be what these two are, or this one and that other one I didn't recognize. Because I don't recall, that's a little, that's like a, a tab, I think, and like paper clips, I think. Those look like, these are, oh, these are border, or these are tabs too, I think. This looks like a bow, a tiny one. And then another. Yep, yeah, see here's the bigger version. Oh, those are cute. Those are really cute. Yep, yeah, two bows. These are the borders. Page page tabs. You can make you can make a cute Valentine journal with these. Oh, it's folded. Ah, I might have to do this. This is Chaos Craft also. So I'm assuming that's what that is. I think it is. Let's look at this other one that I didn't recognize. Okay, let's move this basket. It's in the way now. It's just in the way now. All right. Move that out of the way. Let's look at this one. And I don't know if these were all in this envelope or if I put some in here. I'm not sure. We've got love. That one's cute. We've got this fun heart heart swirly. I wonder if these, this must cut it out of the paper and emboss it because there's nothing holding these together so it must cut it out of the paper like they border up the paper. That would be so pretty like on the edge of um, maybe on the bottom or top or edge of a, of, a, of a journal. We've got some arrows and hearts. Cute. That would do the same thing. It would cut it out. Now we've got this one. We're going to be playing with these. We're going to make we're going to make something fun. I think I'm going to make a little Valentine journal. Wouldn't that be appropriate? Between these and these, I think we can make something super super duper cute. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, I am going to go ahead and go off screen for a minute. I'm going to go find some Valentine paper or something that would work for Valentine's Day. Something themed or color in that color combination that we all expect. We're going to make something fun. Okay, stay tuned. We'll be back. All right, so I'm combining crafting and cleaning today. I went through all of my paper, solid paper storage and took out some of the papers that would work into the um, into the little Valentine journal. And in doing so, I found some pattern papers too. So I got that all organized. So yay me. <laughs> getting two, two birds killed with one stone here. Now you don't have to use traditional colors. You could use something like this and mix these things up. These are the ones I think I've decided I'm going to use for this little journal today. So these are all things I found into in my stash. I found some vellum paper which would be perfect in there. Some white paper with sparkles you could use. I found some cut-aparts that would be fun for a little journal like this. I'll probably do this on another one. I'm going to use a cream cheese box again. So if you have a cream cheese box, these would be perfect for this, wouldn't it? So it might have to be trimmed just a little bit, but we're not going to use this one today. And this one, I, should, I probably should. I probably should go the other route and do the more traditional colors. There's pink. I've got some florals that might go. Um, some coral florals. So it doesn't have to be specific to any particular thing. But I think what I want to do, I really want to put my own spin on this one. So I'm going to go with some non-traditional stuff because this is what makes my, these colors right now are making my heart happy. So that's the way I'm going to go. Now let me put this other stuff aside really quick. That'll be another mess I need to clean up later after I craft with it. These I pulled out because I was thinking about making a little tiny miniature house to go inside my miniature house. And wouldn't this make the perfect wallpaper for that? I think it would be adorable. And then it's got little brick prints and stuff. I think I got this on Timu, if I remember correctly. This is brick wall texture. I think this is on Timu, but look at these prints. Aren't they great? So I was thinking these would make some cute little miniature houses. So I pulled these aside. Sorry, that's beside the point. But I did. I pulled them aside and then this one just kind of fell into that pile. Okay, so here's what I want to do. Oh, and I could use, I could use, totally use this little set too. This will go in here. 
that would work perfectly. And I have those here on my desk as well. So this is going to be my cover. This is just gorgeous. I got a pack of this. It was not $1.99. I got a pack of like 25 sheets of this for like $5.99 or something crazy. So I've got a whole bunch of this. I don't need to take that off. I'm going to use it anyway. Okay. Um, and this is going to be my cover. Okay. So you know me. I love to go a little vintage. So we're going to go vintage with this. We're going to use our dies. Uh, that'll come up later. And I found my tape, you guys. I found it. And I found another Christmas dice hanging out. So we'll put that away later. And so we're going to put a cover on this little guy. Now... I'm thinking about it. Maybe I should use... Do I have a bigger box? Maybe I could use a bigger one. A bigger one today. What about... Nope, that's too big. That's a little more than I want to do today. Yeah, a little more than I want to do today. All right, we're just going to stick with the cream cheese. Oh, hang on. I got mac and cheese. Mac and cheese is a little bit bigger. We could do mac and cheese. It's a little bit wider, too. We'll do mac and cheese. Okay, because this one is going to be a gift. So... We'll go a little bit larger with this one. And I'll make some smaller ones later. This is a gift swap that I'm doing. So I want it to be, I want it to be nice. I want it to be keepable, right? And usable. So I think my box is pretty square, I think. I think. I tried to make it pretty square. It looks like it's a little crooked. I'm gonna get out my box, my, my cutter here. And make, just make sure it's square. Just to make sure. I'm assuming those bits are. Because also, if you know me, you know I can't cut for beans in a straight line. Alright, well, there should be good now. And hopefully, those are even, because. There's no real way to tell. I guess there is a real way to tell. Three and a half by just under three and a half. Dog on it. I'm going to trim this one up slightly. Just a slight, slight, slight. You guys, i got to get my mojo back. I'm in a, I'm kind of in a slump. I've been um, watching so many clay videos I have all these ideas and I need my paper my paper mojo back but I've also been looking at my craft room and it's like I don't know I just don't know where to start I gotta clean up still haven't had a chance to clean up from Christmas completely so I'm working on that I made Gretchen a path to get to her little doggy bed this morning so she's happy We'll get there. We'll get there. There's just so much going on with the family right now and with work, and it's just a lot. So, you know, I'm a little behind. And the kids moved out, so I've got extra, had extra cleaning and extra planning and preparing. And, you know, there were tears, and there's, there's just a lot. So, it's all changed, right? And it's, it's not for the bad. It's, it's a good thing. We just got to remind ourselves it's it's for the best and it's it's wonderful it's wonderful i'm not gonna lie i miss them already <laughs> all of them all of them i miss them already it was so quiet in here last night i'm like oh my gosh it's good but oh it's so quiet okay so but everybody left in happy terms and that's what I'm that's what I'm happy about I'm proud of that oops I pulled the whole thing up on that one make sure those are stuck down really good some of you may be new to my channel and you probably don't know what I'm talking about but my adult kids all not all of them I have one in California that's out on their own um, but I've got Two more that are here local. One of them is recently married, and they've been living at the house because they all kind of came on tough times at the same time. And I've had to cram everything, all of my craft stuff, and my office stuff, and everything into 
whatever spare space I could find to help them out. And it's been wonderful having them here, but it's so nice to have them go out on their own and do their own thing and, you know, start their, their own life. And we're in that transition right now. So they've all moved out within the last couple weeks. And um, Chloe and Matthew were here for just over a year. So that was a long stretch. And I'm grateful because they did a lot of help. They helped me a lot around the house too. So please don't think I, like I said, I love my kids. I'm glad they had the chance to be here and it's been great. But um, I want them to have their, their married life and stuff and be able to do their own thing. Not have to worry about what I think or hear or whatever. <laughs> um, you know, I try not to interfere in their stuff. and I think I've done pretty good at that. It's been, they're, they're equally excited. They've got their apartment that's not too far from here. So I can be nosy and go drop in. And all the kids have new, all three of them have new jobs within the last couple months. So that's a big, that's a big deal too. And it makes, makes me happy because they're, they're on their way to doing great things. So yay. Yay, yay, yay. So that's what I'm talking about. All right, and I'm just gonna put tape around this. This is a very simple, some of you may have done this be plenty of times before, and you probably already know how. Some of you may be just beginning. But I'm just putting this on here to make sure that these seal down really well. Tape seem it will adhere faster than glue, so I like to use tape to tack that down. I do also like to use the glue a bit to help support it. Um, but the tape is nice because it sticks right away. We don't need to put that in the center just yet. Let's we'll make sure those are pressed down really good. And then we'll start on one side at a time. I'll just put my pokey tool away. I need to make a Valentine's pokey tool. I wonder if I have any left. Or if I use them all. I'm not sure. And then let's make sure our glue's opened up without tipping the light over. Ooh, it's not. Uh oh, I feel it. Oh, this is the wrong pin. That might be part of the problem. That pin I don't think fits. Yeah, let's see, I was gonna say, I've never felt it that stuck before. It's just because the pin didn't fit. All right, and then I'm going to put a little glue, particularly in the seam right here, just to make sure it holds really well. I like to glue that seam and then just kind of put a little over that. All right, and then I'm just going to fold this back over. Especially this paper is actually a little bit more plasticky than, pa than regular paper probably has something to do with the glitter. I should probably lift this tape up really quick before that glues down onto that. And this one too. Oh, that worked nicely. Okay. Gorgeous. I love that paper. It could be used very nicely for Christmas. And that was my idea when I got that paper, but this works really well too. The, with the vision that I have. Glue on the seam, right up in there, and a little on the tape. Okay, we'll pull up these sides so that it doesn't fold. Glue onto there, just a bit. Oops. And then pull this over. Sure, we push it tight up against that, and there we go. We'll get out a burnishing tool in a minute and our bone folder and make sure it's all burnished down really well. But real quick, we're just going to get all these edges. We'll do all the burnishing at the same time. There we 
go. And I'll show you what I like to do with those sharp edges too when we're done. Oops, I'm going to fold that back this way a little bit. And this last side. Once again, and press it down. All right, for those corners, when they're really sharp like that, I'm not a fan of that. So I just kind of tap them. Support the page so it doesn't get all, you know, so it doesn't bend. But just kind of tap it on the desk just a little bit, and it'll knock that back just a bit. So it'll have to be a little softer edge. There we go. Isn't that cute? I think it's cute. All right, now we need to use our bone folder. And we're going to put some, we're going to kind of score it where the spine is, help break that, the fibers down in there, make it bend a little easier before we put the cover on it. Okay, we're going to fold that up, making sure we smooth it down in a minute. sure we burnish this all down really well. Okay, and then fold this once more. Slowly, carefully. If you have thick cardstock, don't go as fast as I just did because it'll crack. This stuff is a little more plasticky, so I'm being a little quick about it, but you don't want to do that if you have regular paper. It will, will, will crack, and that makes it tough to, it can be hard to, to fix that if you're looking for a clean look. If you're looking for a rustic look, um, it'll crack it right along the seam here, and you can actually use that to make it look rustic. Or you can take a little bit of glue and just kind of dab it on there and then smooth the paper back will help. Um, but it won't cover it up. So if you don't like that look, don't do it. Don't do it quick like I did. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I would like to use this paper on the inside. Isn't that pretty? So this, this is eight, we're going to say it's eight inches by, we're going to say six and three fourths. So we're going to go six and a half by seven and three fourths. Six and a half. My paper does not want to cut. Why? This is kind of a linen paper. This is very different paper. Let's see, let's see if I can put it in this way and mark it that way. And I forgot that it does that. Six and a half. I'm going to have to use my scissors for that little part, or just tear it for now. We'll get my scissors out and fix it by seven and three fourths. Hopefully, this one will cut straight. Just toward the end, it didn't. Okay, that's all right. It's very thin. I probably could have put some other paper underneath it, and it would have probably kept just fine. Not to mention my blade is probably a bit, sh a bit uh, dull. I've never replaced it or anything. Are you supposed to replace those? I don't know. Okay. So this will go in here just like that. So I, I took a little bit, about a quarter of an inch off of the measurement so it would sit nicely in the, in the middle. And I'm gonna use tape again. Okay. Isn't that pretty? This paper was from, this one is Anecdote Artisan Paper, Joann's. It's an artisan paper. It's, it does, it has a nice feel to it. It's kind of um, rice papery, kind of. It's really thin, really nice paper. Actually, let's put it on this instead. I don't know the measurements if I put it actually on this. 
So once I put this tape down, I won't be able to pick it up because it'll probably tear. It's not super thin that it'll just rip right through. It's just thin enough that my paper cutters doesn't want to cut it. You know, paper cutters generally need a little, a little structure to the paper to cut well. But this is where we got. And I love it. So 2024, I am going to, so last year, in 2023, I tried really hard not to buy any paper, and I think I did pretty well, really. I only went and bought, like, solid colors if I needed them. No, that's not true. Hobby Lobby had that sale, and, and I bought a bunch of paper. I did. I bought a bunch of paper. So I take that back. But nobody can blame me for that. Anybody, everybody was doing it. <laughs> I have plenty for quite a while. So in 2024, I am going to do my best not to buy paper unless I absolutely need like solid colors to go with the with the printed stuff that I have. And I've got so I've got an abundance. I should not need paper for a while. So, but as I clean up, there's also going to be some things that I probably will No, I don't donate paper. You know why I don't donate paper? Because even ugly paper, you can do stuff with it. You can do stuff with it. You can mask it and make it, make it pretty and do something artsy with it and use it. For, you know, you can, you can use it. Even if you don't like it, especially if you don't like it. That's when you make collages on it. You use it for your base pieces. Um, and you can paint on it and make it neat. Make it so that it is pretty, so that you can use it. And love it. That's what junk journaling is fun for. Because you can put some of those things in there. Am I passionate about it? Yes! I love it. I love creating something beautiful out of basically anything. Isn't that fun? Isn't that fun? We can find things around the house. We don't have to spend a bunch of money. It's nice to have all the cool things all the cool toys. I'm trying not to spend a bunch on stamps or, or um, die cuts or anything like that. I'm trying really hard not to do that either. Now that doesn't mean if a good sale doesn't comes up I'm not going to grab it or something comes up I just have to have in my collection. I will. I'll buy it but I'm going to try not to. I'm going to clean up my space and um, Use what I have the best that I can. Okay, so if you guys are into that and you're trying to do the same, stick with me. We're going to find ways to use those things. Now these papers I love. These are not things that I don't love. These I love. These are some of my favorites. These I actually purchased probably last year or the year before for a project. And I did the project. I just had some left. And the project was gorgeous. It made me sad though because, oh you know what? Huh. I was thinking, I think that the person that I'm sending this to, I think I made them a project with these papers before. I think it was for the same person. If so, they'll have a matched set. That's pretty cool, huh? But that's why I bought the papers because I was thinking of them. Because <laughs> I know that they love them. So, yeah makes sense. Makes sense why I would do that twice. Okay. All right, we've got that. So we've got our cover now. What was that noise? Are the kids here? The kids are here. The kids are here. They're cleaning out their stuff, I guess. They still have some things downstairs in their space. All right, so we'll do that. I'm gonna kind of make this so it doesn't pop open. Oh, they're announcing themselves. All right, I'll be back. All right, my friends. So I <laughs> got a little more done while we waited for the kids to settle. They are moving some stuff downstairs. So I have made, found some pages that I want to do. Now, the purpose of this journal, I didn't mention it earlier, is with this swap, we want to do some embellishments that we're going to share. So I am making this to, um, she can use it however she wants to, but I'm going to put embellishments in it. And so I don't need a ton of pages. It's, it's not going to be like a journaling journal. Um, no more of an embellishment book, I guess I should call it. 
So I've got some cardstock pages out and put these in here. I made this one, this vellum page, into a little folder. So to make this folding easier, you can slit the, um, or miter the corners here. I just tore it a little bit. And then fold those in and it'll make a little less room in here so that it doesn't, it folds a little better and then it doesn't tear. And then I've got some here. This is an example of what I was talking about, the cardstock cracking. I folded this a little too quickly and you can actually, you can see the little tears where it cracked. You can take your glue and just, maybe with not with the glue stuck on it like that, but just kind of put a little touch in there. I'm not as worried about this because it's going to be sewn on the inside, it won't show. But you can just kind of do this and then fold that back over, put a tiny bit, and it'll help to mask it. Like I said, it won't, um, it won't totally hide it, but it will mask it a little bit and it'll help keep that paper sturdy. So that's what you can do to fix it if that happens to you on the outside of your journal. Just kind of fold that back down, smooth it and that will help. So there we go. So we've got those papers, we're gonna put those in there and then I can just kind of put dots in here and glue the little embellishments in or tuck pockets and stuff, um, which you won't see all of that because I want some of it to be a surprise and she does watch my videos. So now on the back here, I'm going to put a little belly band because I wanna put a little notebook in the back, something she can take out and use. So we're gonna put a little belly band here. We're gonna use a strip of the scrap vellum paper for that and just put a little there and put this down and the kids are back I'll be right back all right let's try this again sorry for the back and forth guys so we've got that glued in now so we have a belly band that should be nice and glued and we've got our pages so we're just gonna have to attach these in and do -do -do make the little booklet. So let's make the little booklet first. No, let's attach them in. Because you know, because you know, it's it's easy to do. You guys have seen me do it a thousand times. We're gonna eyeball this beauty. This Does this look good? Does this look good? That's, oh, I could use this. No, that doesn't work. Um, this one? Ooh, that's pretty. Let's use this one. Let's use this one. Kind of add some brown in there. That's kind of picks up that color in there. I like it. I like it a lot. So, we're just going to do some basic. I'm only doing two on this one because it's small. I don't need to do three. We're going to do two. doesn't have to be complicated, right? Now we can make a template or we could just do this. We could just do this. Poke it through all of them at the same time. All my pages are the same size, so the holes will be catching everything. If I do them all at the same time, then oh, I should be using my awl for this, not the needle. What am I thinking? Then the holes will be on the same place for both signatures. Okay, and then we'll take that first signature back and we'll take those out. Use the first signature. And I'm going to put these kind of towards the front because I want a little bit more room in the back for that booklet. So these are going to be kind of pushed towards the front so they won't be evenly spaced in my journal, purposely doing that, making that conscious decision. And I'm gonna poke it through there. Let's line this one up where I want it, right there. Take that back out, holding this still. You could use clamps to hold this still, would be great. Boom, but you know. When you're eyeballing and not looking for perfection, it's not an issue. It's a non-issue. Go back through here and through there. 
Oops, my paper slid. That's okay. There we go. How easy is that? So if you don't want to do a three pamphlet stitch, you're making something simple like this that doesn't have to, you know, hold up to tons of wear and tear or anything. Two is fine. You're going to be catching all of the pages that way. You can do it this way. It's really easy. So we leave those on there. I'm going to glue this on the edge because I need to Tomorrow, I'll be helping Chloe finish moving and cleaning up at her new apartment. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm very excited about that. That would be fun. And so we'll put this one off just a little bit, line it up. Those holes are already in there for me, so we're just going to poke through. Make sure it's still lined up right so that I get that second one in at the right place. I'm lining up the bottom here, the top up there, so that they're straight, and pushing through. Okay, now we're ready for that needle again. Grab some more thread. I didn't know I'd be doing book binding when I was... Um, started this project. Did not realize. It's kind of a fun fun thing. It makes it makes your you know the possibilities endless because you now you know how to do it. You know how to put together a book. Even if it's I mean it's not I'm not doing anything fancy like Nick the booksmith is amazing. But, um, you know, we can put simple books together and make something beautiful. I think that's pretty cool. Do you guys ever think about that? Like, you're taking some paper, some flat paper that somebody made or, or didn't. Well, I guess somebody made it. No matter what paper it is, I guess somebody made it or a machine made it, whatever. It, it was made. You're taking something like this and you're turning it into something useful. Something, you know, something beautiful and useful, something worth holding on to. Okay, I think that's pretty darn cool. Okay, so we've got the book. I've left those on there because I could put beads or string or charms or something on there. So, I'm going to leave those, and then we need to make a book. So, just a little booklet. See, that's all on there. That's a little off-center, and I intended to do that. That's nothing wrong with that. We could put some lace or something over this. We could put something decorative over this, or we could leave it alone. And they turned out mostly even. They're a little bit, they're a little bit off, but that's okay. Um... Let's make a book, a little tab, a little tablet to put in there. We should use. Should we use this paper again? I really love this paper. I think we should use this, but I think that we need to line it because I don't think it's thick enough. Let's put. Hmm. What do I like the bestest? Is this good? I kind of like that. It's bright and cheery. I think it'll be strong enough. Is this side better? It's torn a little bit. Um, let me see if this is too wide. I guess it doesn't matter too much. Yeah, I'm gonna turn this down a little bit anyway. So that'll take some of that edge off. 
to do is just like a little notebook is what we're looking for. And I know you're wondering why I did it that way. Well, because we're going to cover the front of it with this. So, because that paper is just really thin. This will give her just a quick little notebook. She can write her notes in, or, you know, if she's working on a project or something, or grocery list, I don't know. Whatever, whatever she wants to put on there. She can. There we go. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, this might be a little bit too tall, too. Okay, we'll just use scissors to clean this up. I'm going to take off this bottom, but I need a straighter edge. I think this will cut through this way. So this isn't too complicated of a project. It's super simple, really. Right? Not too, not too hard. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get some of this paper. We need to cut it, let's see, into pieces that are 5 and 3 fourths by 5. So 5 and 3 fourths by 5. Okay, I'm going to do that. I'll be right back. All right, you guys. So I used my stapler and stapled these pages in after I cut them. And we're just going to stick this in right in here. So this will fit in here. So there's our little our little journal. Now I do want to use some of these die cuts and make some things. So that'll kind of stick in there that way. Maybe I should... There we go. So it'll just kind of tuck in there. And let's see. We can add... I do have this little pocket in this envelope that are already cut out. These were gifted to me. These were also um, die cuts. So let's see if there's something that we can... I think this is supposed to just fit in here. It's going to be too long this way though. Well, shucks. Do I want to just stick it this way? I can put this in here for a little note for her. So this will go, this is a little perforated section here. So I'm glad that those die cuts actually inspired me to make this journal. <laughs> and now I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to use them in here though. Um, cause I already, I just, I just attached all my pages. So the ideas that I had are kind of not going to work, but I'll have to do something with them to show you guys. We'll put this here. And that way I can tuck a little note in there for her. Remember, my glue gun is on over here, guys. It is, it is. It all needs to be put away. So I'm going to stab myself. So we've got the quick little... I say quick. How long did that take me? With all the stops and starts. Probably a lot longer than I intended. But we've got that tucked in there. I'm so glad I got to use that. That's so cute in there. And we've got this beautiful little journal that we can just keep adding on to. A little notebook in the back, all the pages. We can put embellishments in here, put tags in here, um, all the things. So I'll be making, I'll be using the, the um, embellishments. Oh, you know what? One, didn't one of them say something about 
just a note or no, it wasn't just a note. It was what was that heart one that had words on it that I couldn't read right away? With love. Will that fit right here? Almost. Darn, it's too wide. Too wide. Will it fit on here? Too wide. So I'll definitely need to put something. I want one of these guys. If I can do this really quick. See, these are neat because you can use just this piece or just this piece and it'll cut it out of your solid page. So if, if I did this on here, it would just cut the design out of this page. Or you can use this piece around it and it'll cut the whole thing out. Is that awesome? So let's... This is the one I need to know if it'll fit. I can put that whole piece. I think I can put one of these on there. Would be really cute. Then I'll make her some more in here to keep. So let's run this through really quick. You guys stay with the nope. I'm gonna have to come back to you. Because guess what? I piled stuff on top of my my big shot. So I'm gonna go clean that off, cut this out, and I'll be back. Alright, you guys, so this is how it cuts out. And we'll just pop these little little guys out of here. I probably should have used my little tool that I got from Timu, but you know what? We're already here. We're almost done. There were a couple pieces of paper stuck to my, um, oh man, my mat, and I think it didn't cut right because of it. But they're almost out. Let's see here. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Just run that through. Did I mention I hope you guys are doing great today? I might run this through one more time. Because now that I cleaned off the mat, I'm going to go do this again. So, I can still salvage that one, but I don't want to sit here picking this apart. So hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not going to turn off the machine this time because, you know what? Nobody's perfect, right? So let's run this through a little bit differently on a different spot on my mat. And hopefully that will work better. And I'm going to run it through one more time just in case. Just to be sure it's nice and tight. No fault of the die. That's totally about ooh, my mat and where I ran it. So let's see if we can do that better. Yep. Way better. Except now this side doesn't want to go. <laughs> what the heck, man? What the heck? What the heck? Let's see what I can get out. And let's see what we'll do about it. They're so fine. I'm afraid I'm going to tear them. I should have put a shim under there. Should have. And I was even thinking it when I did it. I should put a shim under here. I like to make things difficult on myself. I think I can fit that back on there very well. Ooh, I can. It fits and snaps in really nice. So I think I'm going to go put a shim under it. And let's run this through one more time. Actually, that fits really nicely. I can feel it. It's snug. I can't slide it. So I know it's in a good spot. So we'll just put this on top of this other one. I have shims in here already. different spot on my mat. Let's try this one one more time. 
Monster cells. Through two more times. What's that? As I'm standing here looking over here, I found just found a box full of things. Wow, I need to go through that box. That looks cool. I know it's stuff that was gifted to me, but I don't remember what's in it. I love cleaning my, my craft room. It's like Christmas in here. Oh, that's so much better. All right, those should pop just right out. Um, I need a little, little help. Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. So when Chloe came in, she said she was going to pick up stuff that her... Um, the oil paintings that my grandmother made for her. I kind of laughed because they've been tucked up in the closet for a couple of years because I didn't have really any room to put them. There's just a couple of them. I have the rest of them up, but you know, you kind of run out of walls after a while. And she has no pictures for her apartment, so she wanted those for her walls. That makes me so happy. I love that. She's putting my grandmother's paintings up there like that. All right, so this fits just right. Put some glue back here. I can't wait to see see her place and what she does with it. She opened one of the cat. She took a video of it when they did the walkthrough, and sent it to me so I could kind of see it. And one of the cabinets in the kitchen has chicken wallpaper, like old chicken wallpaper. It's so cute. It's not her style, but I love it. She knew I would. All right, we'll put that on a slant right there. And then I'm going to cut some out and add them into this book, so she'll have some of these to play with, too. But we're just going to use one for decoration now. In there. Because it is a little Valentine thing, right? All right, and then we'll put this one in here. I cut this one out. This is that Tim Holtz die that you can, you know, tuck your little pieces in. I wanted to put this in here, maybe maybe on this spot, because the items, maybe, I want it on a solid piece. Well, whether it's white or purple, I don't care. Purple. I don't want it on the white because when the, when I put things in it, it'll add color to this page. So I don't have to worry about putting much in the background. But I can put tags and things that'll color this page up. I think that's what we're going to do. So we'll just put some glue down here at the bottom and on the all the way around the outside actually. And we'll put this down here. We'll have lots of room. That's just the perfect size for this, isn't it? Excellent. I thought of that. That die just happened to be sitting on the my Cricut, or not my Cricut, my um, Big Shot. I thought, oh, hey, I could use that. See, isn't that great? And then we can just kind of stick pieces of paper or, you know, little ephemera in there and share that way. So there we go. There's a couple of them used. I think we're going to call it for now. I've got a lot to do to this, but I do want some of it to be a surprise. So I will, you'll probably see this next time after it's completely finished and after she's received it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this part of the process and I'm hoping that you will enjoy the finished product as well. So thanks for joining me today. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for your love and support. I hope you all have a fantastic day. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.